Welcome to the Yo Podcast, an interview series where we spotlight leading designers, developers, and makers. I'm your host, Rob Hope, and today we have the Jay Verma, a talented designer renowned for his intricate Figma art and his extensive portfolio of free digital resources. In this episode, we explore his humble beginnings as an electrician in India and his rise to become one of the most beloved designers in the Figma community. Additionally, we have a special case study where Vijay walks us through his character design process, complete with a bonus time-lapse recording he sent after the interview. Please note that Vijay speaks quite fast and this is a media-rich episode. Therefore, I highly recommend watching the interview on YouTube with subtitles turned on. If you're tuning in elsewhere, simply head to yo.fm forward slash Vijay to be redirected to YouTube and fully experience the talent of Vijay Verma. Yo Vijay, welcome to the Yo podcast, my man. Hey, Rob. Thank you for having me. It's really wonderful. You come from a town, a tiny town in North India. Oh, yes. And you grew up drawing mountains and small houses. Why do you think you decided to draw those things? Uh, out of curiosity, maybe. I or I'm not that good in a study when I was a kid. <laughs> so instead of... Uh, Focusing on study, I love to draw and doodles. So your journey for me is very motivating because, you know, there's a part of your life where you became an electrician. How did you know that? <laughs> and from there, you, you were like, I don't want to do this. I, I, I want to do something with computers. Why did you feel you need to step away from being an electrician? I was an electrician because I have to support my family. So that was the only main reason. Like after schooling, like here at India, schooling is like 10th standard. So after finishing 10th standard, uh, my family can, can't afford to teach me again more uh, high school. And uh, so what uh, I uh, started uh, is uh, like joined a, a small electrician shop where I learned uh, all those basic things of like electronics where like people re repair tv vcr cds that time cd and vcr was very popular it was quite fun actually i learned a lot of stuff even i assemble a small personal tv and like vcr cds for like uh, my home <laughs> uh yeah it's fun fixing things uh yeah it's fun fixing things but then I realized uh, maybe I'm not made for this. I have to do something more than this. So when I was like from home to that electronic shop, I have to buck, right? So I saw these uh, a small, small computer institute. So I decided one day, what about let, let's go to one of these institutes and ask about what is this computer thing. So... I started learning computer there and then things changed after finishing three or four month course. I joined uh, a studio, photo studio, where I, I started creating photos at Photoshop. And then this journey started like, oh, Photoshop is very interesting tool. I should learn more, more about Photoshop than just creating photos for other people. So at uh, free time, I started learning those all Photoshop trick tips and tricks uh, from the internet. That time, the internet was also so very slow. When you started to really cr get creative in Photoshop, did that bring back memories from when you were drawing mountains and, and houses when you were younger? Did you feel that sort of creativity? Yeah, exactly. Think before this this new career where i started uh, uh, using computer i barely know how things made for tvs or animation in cartoons so when i started learning this photoshop thing then i realized i think this is the way maybe i should pursue something and then one day maybe i will create those things which i always dream of wow that's that's such a cool origin story should should we should we crack on into a game? Do you want to play a game? Sure, sure. Okay, so this game is called No Context. All I'm going to do is shoot you two options, okay? 
and all you need to do is shoot one of them back. I'm not going to give you any context mm -hmm. to why they're related or what they really mean. And you don't have to tell me why you chose either of them. You just got to shoot back one of the options I give you. Okay. You got it. Yes, yes. Let's do it. Captain America or Iron Man? Iron Man. Always Iron Man. Disney or Pixar? Oh, I will go with Pixar. The Notorious PNG or the Leia Slayer? <laughs> Of course, uh, layer is layer because I admire Pablo Stanley a lot. Sorry, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Textures or shadows? I I am I am more uh, I'm not minimal, guys. I like colors, vibrant and detailing, so I can go with textures because with the texture I can give the shadow also. Hues or gradients? Oh, gradient is back. I love gradients. Angels or wizards? Oh, I love wizards. Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter? Lord of the Rings. Figish or design potion? Oh, oh both looks good, but I will go with design potion. <laughs> cooking or exercising? I barely exercise, so of course cooking whenever I get time. Okay, and lastly, online courses or 30-day design challenges? I will go with the challenges because I think with challenge you have like lots of control from your side. <laughs> Fast forwarding a few more years in your journey, your design journey, you were employed by Zomato to help them with their design systems. You even designed a cool um, you know, in-house system called Sushi, if I remember correctly. So exactly. now you're working independently you have a studio called overlays and you're helping just yes. a handful of clients set up their design systems you know you really help you know with your experience just like get people started okay but your spare time is spent with side projects and you started to really go hard on figma and design the most intricate color filled detailed illustrations in figma okay so my question is do you think that other designers should try take on these character challenges because of all the problem solving involved with trying to achieve all these details and shadows and you know the 3D elements? Do you think if they went down the route similar to yours, do you think the end result the end result there'd be a better UI designer because of it? Yeah, like for some cases, yeah, exactly true. Uh, but uh, creating UI design is sometimes I feel it's like boring task because you have to just do rectangles and <laughs> write text. Yeah, it it will helps you in some way, but uh, definitely it will not directly make you a better UI designer. It will helps you to like uh, understand, like you already told, uh, understand these tools in a different way. So you will maybe achieve some certain result quickly than people who just know how to use uh, this Figma or other tool creating, for creating a UI design. A huge shout out to our season sponsor, Webflow, who allow us to build websites with the power of code without writing any. You can take control of a website's HTML code, CSS styles, and JavaScript animations, all within a stunning visual canvas. I use Webflow for my personal website, and it's a breeze to make quick changes. You open up the visual designer, click right into an element, tweak, and then hit publish top right. The change is deployed and live in seconds. I'm also really enjoying the remote collaboration feature. The other day, I wanted to integrate my most recent five blog post titles on my homepage. So I called up my dear friend Matt to help guide me. After assigning Matt an admin role, he helped quickly integrate the title block and buzzed me to take a look. I logged in, tweaked the block heading, then deployed it all myself. Brilliant. Webflow is totally free to get going and you only start paying when you need to go live. So head over to webflow.com for your next website build. I've got a question here from a Roji King. Oh my God. You have a handful of client gigs and mostly do stuff for free or for personal growth. And you do stuff to benefit the community. What drives that? Why aren't you just doing stuff for money all the time? I think I am more artistic person, I can confidently say, than uh, people like business mindset person. So 
I always prioritize experimentation and exploration than uh, financial benefit. So that's why I created all those things either for just fun, learning purpose, or just solving my own problems, right? So w- after creating something just for fun or even solving my own problem, when I realize, okay, I can finish it, but what what will be the uh, benefit of this if it's staying at my uh, Figma file or my computer? J- let's just share it. This is how it's all started. When I first released illustration.co, I think that was the first project I realized. And then I realized I did this challenge in back in 2016. And currently it's 2019. And I may have a little bit social presence because of those 100 days of challenge. But other than that, this illustration is not used or maybe I am not that con- consistent on social med- network. So my maybe social reputation or you can say credibility uh, is not improving or growing. But about just getting or uh, opening this thing to community, maybe this will benefit other people even to learn how made these things or it will also help me to maybe find some new people. So would you say you're, you are more driven about being connected with people online than getting paid? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You rephrase it better. How would you describe your relationship with money? Do you, do you hate money? Do you, do you, do you just, do you, do you have enough and you're just like, I don't need more? Yeah, actually, actually I, I think I have enough to survive and do whatever I want. So I don't need enough money. Like I have like some fixed clients. Like I was working two or three years. Like it's it's almost two or three years past. So I think I can earn money whenever I want from my skills. But I don't want to stay short my life just for earning money or growing money. Instead of I, I wanted to focus on things I always wanted to do like that's why I think I, I have lots of side project like it's not that big side project it's just a project I did it and not a single side project is like my revenue source people come and donate it that's totally fine but it's just I create and then it's shared so my, my side project is just for fun or you can say or it's just a tool I created just to solve my problem and it's free for other people. And I also believe in open source community. So that's how it is. Hey friends, this is Rob from The Edit. The next part is super cool. But Jay sent us a time-lapse recording of him designing the character we discuss. I've sped up the recording to fit the segment, but I've also included the full 15-minute time-lapse at the end of the episode if you'd like to see the more nuanced methods. All right, back to the interview. What we're going to do is we are going to put ourselves in the shoes of Vijay, who's about to embark on a job with a fictitious client. So the client doesn't exist, okay? But the backstory is this. They discovered you when they saw your very first design in Figma for the sole Pixar character. They loved it. So they saw the two little characters that you started sharing on on social media and why they really like those two characters is they are trying to create an animated series about a colorful ghost and they're trying to conceptualize this character but they're really struggling to nail it they can't get the character down they can't spark that life into the character okay and the three main key attributes of this character this animated ghost is it's playful, it's colorful, and it's misunderstood. So they reached out to you saying, we love your work. We would really love you if you could design a character for us just to try and help us envision how we can maybe create this into a TV series one day. But they need that brief. They need to create this character and they've asked you to please help them. 
So do you understand the character? Do you, do you feel like you can sort of see this character slightly? Yeah, actually, it's like, it's colorful and mi- misunderstood. It's like Misunderstood. It's like, a, it's a bit of an, an outcast, you know? It's like the ghost doesn't fit in because he's colorful, you know? Most ghosts are like plain. You know, he was just born a colorful ghost and he doesn't fit in. So he's misunderstood. Maybe he doesn't, you know, fit in with the friends, but that's the character brief. Okay. So that I made it very complicated for you on purpose. But Jay, I want to know, how does your process work now to nail this, this final product? How, what goes down? And we can go very broad. We don't have to go super detailed. Okay. I want to know what happens. Do you go have a meeting with this client? Do you send them a questionnaire? How do you get your inspiration? Do you start sketching it? Do you put it straight into Figma? And then, you know, how long do you sit with it normally before you give your first revision to your client? So just take me through your process. So I think process varies uh, project wise, but uh, for this type of process, usually after getting a, like initial email or something, I, I just uh, replied with a bunch of questions like, some reference or more minor details of the those things and once they replied with all the answers i just uh i start exploring something similar like when i you're talking about this podcast characters so maybe i will find some animated animated movies or some movies or games characters which almost look like that. I will study, I will explore, I will understand those things. How long is that phase? It also depends, right? So maybe it will be one day or two days. See, it's, it's been people uh, send me request, design inquiry, yeah, project uh, inquiry. Then before replying, I try to understand or explore their portfolio even. Like, if I, they, they, they replied, uh, they, they email from their company, company email account, then I will go to the website and just try to understand the client before replying, even f- first reply. So I a study upward, even maybe do, do, do that client will not work with me, but I spend some time before replying a sing- first, first email. And then if I found some idea and then I have a confidence to take this project. I just uh, schedule a call, maybe 15 minutes or 30 minutes to discuss further and how things will work. And if they agreed, I will uh, jump to the uh, sketching or doodling phase where I- Do you ask for a deposit? Yeah, the, those things, those discussion after they agreed, like I depo- mostly I uh, charge 30% or 50% upfront to start working. So those are like a standard contract I already have. So that's, and then uh, uh, I start doodling and the sketching first and like just uh, like back and forth discussion with the client either on email or maybe whenever we want, we can schedule a call. Sometimes we set up WhatsApp or Slack channel where we discuss those things. So they, if they like some of the idea from those sketches, then I move to mood wording phase where I uh, collect reference, references or something similar things either on Pinterest or maybe Figma. These days I use Figma for everything. So I can go with Figma and then dump all those references. And uh, the, again, this this thing is like iterative process, right? I created a sketch I discussed with client. I created mood board to understand their understanding, like what they are wanting then. And then everything, if works out, then I will start creating a rough, rough like color. It's not final, final, but it's like almost what I am thinking or to discuss final uh, stage to move forward, right? Like final phase of the illustration part. Sometimes I use Procreate to do those quick sketches also. And so do you start with like color 
or is that right at the end? If I have to create something from the scratch, then I don't start color, colorful at at the beginning, right? I have to go from those process, so I don't uh, spend too much time on like minor detailing first. So yeah, so when they approve those sketches and we discuss mood board and uh, everything, then I move to the phase before the finishing phase, which is like I draw roughly, but almost finish finish illustration. And if they wanted to move forward, I just do the final touch. Even I did it something similar recently. A client, I think she was from New York. She wanted to create a child tent, child tent, tent. Uh, on the theme of frozen, frozen inspired uh, child tent. So she shared, uh, like you already told, uh, from the Figma profile, those soul and some uh, Disney character as a reference from my profile. And she wanted to create do some something like those characters on the background backdrop of something frozen related so i did all those things i started uh from the sketch and i already have the the, the screenshot maybe i will share so th- th- so these are the process and at the end i just delivered everything figma and even final touch was on f- photoshop even after figma i exported everything uh, at uh, like 10x or I think 20x size, so it will be very high, very high res. So those PNG is like uh, almost one GB PNG. I was betting on Figma; it will export when it will export, and then I moved it to Photoshop for color correction and all, and then mm, very minor details. And then convert it to uh, CM by K. Okay. It goes fig, Figma, then it goes to um, Photoshop, and you're saying it gets fine detail, and then you export it to CMYK. Yes, because for, uh, Figma doesn't support the CM by K thing, or some of the minor detail is like uh, pencil touch and all is more comfortable in doing in Photoshop than uh, this Figma. So I had to do it there. Uh, major problem by this color color thing, CM by K thing, because I was doing all those things uh, in this beautiful color on Figma, and then she uh, told me this color looks good, but uh, I need in, in uh, CM by K. So I just randomly con- exported from Figma and moved to the Photoshop, and then just changed the mode, and every every color burst out. So what I did is color corrected everything. Way brighter. Everything is not just brighter. I have to. It's very long process. I after some time I realize I have to export every layer in different different. Like I grouped everything and then exported and then color. It's it's very long process. But I I was happy. It's it's this is what I wanted always wanted to do. So I enjoyed it. At the end the project size was almost four GB plus in multiple layers and all, but it's like I shared on drive and then. Wow. Then she was happy. And is that one image or is that like a whole bunch of moods and and assets? It's two images. It's like tent. So this is like a circle one is a single image and top one is something like this. So this is a one image. So it was fun project. So it's. You want to break into a second intermission? Yeah, sure. So let's do it. Okay, so this intermission is called Overrated, Underrated. I'm going to give you a topic, a brand, a person, and all you need to do is let me know if you feel like it's overrated, underrated, or properly rated if you feel like the world has an even eye on it. You got it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Bollywood films. From global perspective, it's underrated. Shah Rukh Khan. Properly rated, like... He's great. 11th of June. Underrated. <laughs> Nobody know. <laughs> I always try to uh, add a stick, Easter egg. 1106. 
<laughs> on my list is in summer summer list is in sport for me it's properly rated <laughs> buy me a coffee underrated i guess the pay what you want pricing model it's underrated people take it for granted threads by instagram currently underrated it's going good sketch underrated <laughs> procreate properly rated design subscription services overrated and lastly nfts overrated <laughs> you're a prolific content creator you're almost creating content across so many social channels every day you've got 70,000 LinkedIn followers. You've got Instagram broadcast channels. You've got a newsletter called the Design Newsletter that you send 125 editions. You have a Discord called the Design Wizards. So you're also creating generous freebies all the time. What I want to know is what advice do you have for other designers out there to grow their audience like you have? Okay, what is working and what is not working? if you were to start today i can say just start with one grow your audience there focus on one platform first and after then you can leverage those audience to do more stuff like maybe move to a dental platform and maybe create a email marketing stuff newsletters but if you are alone doing these stuff so i think you should either focus on maybe twitter or linkedin this is linkedin is also going and if you are good in creating design process and uh, recording your videos go create uh, tiktok or reels if you were to start today as a designer give me the top 3 platforms you think you should share your work openly with twitter is great i uh, still great actually people are saying it's going down but i believe in twitter first and if you are a designer i think secondly uh you should go with figma community if you have good content you are creating good content and you if in if, if you just want to share as a freebie go with figma i guess so the figma to share your freebies on the figma community there yeah like i see like there even home page is still very relevant and almost like a dribble these day like i feel it like if your product have maybe certain threshold likes or download they uh move it to front page right and where from where people you will get a lot of exposure i guess people are getting it and third one i think i should pick a uh, still instagram reels i am not in that uh, platform to create reels because i think i don't think this is uh, my cup of tea at the moment maybe in future i will get uh, but reels are great there are so many indians listening to this right now that feel like they have to go to america to make it they're not going to make it from india there are definitely people that think like that i'm from south africa i get asked this all the time do you feel like from staying in africa it feels like you have wasted you know some opportunity by not spreading your wings overseas what advice do you have for other indians out there that think that they are holding themselves back by staying in their home country i think when we start our career we always look for those things like okay i will go to america or new york california will stay there start working there but i think once you matured enough you will understand the reality or maybe you understand the importance when you understand your your goal maybe what you wanted to do from life then you will i think settle down where you are or if you want to move you can move i always have a dream i will stay in new york work from there but I never been there. Why though? Is is that because that's what you've seen other people do, but you don't truly want that? Yeah, exactly. I think so because you can do same thing from anywhere. These day we are living in the era where things are open. You can work from anywhere for anyone. It 
It it does make sense. Um, you know, in my ex experience, I have learned a lot traveling. I have made new friends. And I want to throw it out there right now. I'm going to throw this one out there. I've never been to America. How? I know you have not been to America. Okay. If you go to the config in 2025, if you go, okay, I will go. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that that. That that's the deal. I'm planning it right here. I've never been to America. You never been to America. You never left India. I'm throwing out there. We can hang out, hang out with Raji uh, and Meggy and like, Leia Slayer, yeah. Notorious P and G. <laughs> All those are like I I make lots of friends online, and those are the people like I admire a lot, including you, of course. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so. So for the people that want to follow your journey online, Vijay, where where is the best place for them to I, to uh, see your work? I think I am always active on Twitter. But I can't say always. I mean, I always try to reply most of the tweet and the um, So Twitter is best place. And at real VJY, like most of the people know me by that handle. So whatever social network you know, just search me there. I will be there. And uh, my website is vizibai.me. You can see all the stuff I do. I am doing everything. Easter egg and all. You can find there. Awesome. Vijay, thanks so much for taking the time to chat Same to me here. today. All the best. Thanks. <laughs>